light show in our backyard, that's not what's going to make things move. It's the quality of light issues. Uh, a lot of things I'm going to up here tonight is, uh, I'll just show a few things. My neighbor, hey, can I park in the driveway? I go around for 20 minutes and can't find a spot. Uh, another one here, hey, there's a cab blocking your driveway. I'll park there. Uh, another one, hey, sorry to bother you, can I block your driveway for 20 minutes? Hi, I think there's another call parking your driveway. Live it over a company station. You know, these people want to use the train. And I spoke to a guy who drove down from Tarrytown. Drives down from Tarrytown, he walks to Pella Bay, he's not on the six show. Um, I got people from Pella, uh, Pella Man, I drive down, uh, all over. Block the right driveway. And they don't block it for a few minutes, they block it for eight hours. I got photos here, block my knees and start away, block my hydrants, block the four source. We don't, you know, we're like a parking lot. Now, we talk about 3250 being built, and if that's built, uh, that's the day I'm going to be. Because if you're going to park your car in this neighborhood, go into that metal home, are you going to park, okay, or you're going to drive down the block and park somebody else's house for free? That's what people do. And they don't care. They don't care if they park their car in a great house. Now, uh, how soon will be? be working for a Local laws will then make sure you code, so we'll make creation of residential parking for this system. I think we should have that done away. Because, as you said, quality of life. Now, why should my quality of life be diminished to help somebody from outside my neighborhood? It should. And we got a homeless shelter down the block for me. I got homeless guys, uh, some of them are moms, some of the people who lost their houses, but even men in suits get off the train and walk down my block. Like I said, 8,000 cars from St. Paul, 6,000 per. There's no parking there. And now you want to build all these giant buildings because some greedy contractor wants to come in and make a buck off all neighborhoods. I, 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 the young lady who sent it last month to me, and I asked her, she's going to ask me. I'll ask you this question. Oh my God, why should I say it? I'll tell you why. Because you stuck it through already. Yeah, 52 years. Ain't it better? Because you're a Bronxite and a Bronx crowd. And I truly believe that the borough of Bronx is getting better and it will get better. Now, hear me out. I truly believe in the Metro North that's coming into this area is going to turn this community for the better. This is the greatest borough in the city. There is no borough that has so residents that are so proud of the community that they were born in, lived in, and raised their family. And it's that passion that drives us to improve, right? We want it better. We, we believe it should be better. Am I right? Yeah, but every time it's destroyed, it's getting worse. So, collectively, we make changes. Teresa, when she was asked, Mother Teresa, how are you possibly going to take care of all the starving children in the world? You know what she said? One mouth at a time. And one pot all the time and one illegal parking spot at a time, we're going to make things better. But it's passion like yours that at 8 o'clock at night on a weekday when you get home with your family or watching TV, or just enjoying the comfort of your own home that brings you out to these meetings. <coughs> this is the this is the energy I feed off of. If these residents can come together and stay at a community meeting until 8:30 at 9 o'clock at night, so they can be a better part of change, this is what I want. This is I can't say, and I can't I say this again, I stress this to you. 52 years, don't do it all on a parking spot. Collectively, we will figure out how, 
and we push and we pull and by hook and by or by crook we do this because this area has some of the best elected officials. You've got a congressman. Now hear me out. Hold hold thank you very much. Hold it. I'm Well, I'll explain this to you. This congressman that represents this area is the fourth highest ranking congressman in the country. That means something. Oh, oh. That means something. Does it? Well, I don't mind. You have a state senator, Jeff Klein. One of the four most powerful people in the state. That's two. Then you have this hard-working, energetic, crazy council member. That is not going to take no for an answer. And an assembly member that represents this area and collectively something that hasn't been done before. You will have federal, state, and city all working together, pooling our resources to make sure that we can make a difference. That will improve your quality of life. Work with us, and I mean this, not, not, nothing happens overnight. Hi, Mark John. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, all right. going to take that information, and I promise you that we really follow. And I and I'm proud of the colleagues that represent this area. You can't do it by yourself. In numbers, that in numbers, that's great, right? This is where you hear about the right side. It's coming together. It really is folks. What do you call it? Mark 
Joe Knight's personal cell phone. Don't abuse it, use it. 917-731-6850. We have a great command. And I don't know the circumstances for the lack of love. And I don't want to say something that may be misunderstood. The city is going through a transition right now. And that tra transition is lack of enforcement of uh, laws for low um, level infractions. Boy, I hope I said that okay before somebody starts talking. Kind of. I don't need your help. You need two help. It's not easy. <laughs> it's a little different. They're not prosecuting. They're not arresting. It's very difficult. Now, here's what I know. Growing up and born and raised in the borough of the Bronx, I played out the street. A pup from sewer camp to sewer camp was free. I sat on my neighbor's steps. They didn't have children. The community embraced the children. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say that we were complete angels, and perhaps we were drinking oh, well, I'm talking about adults. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about adults that are out so, when I also want to be careful. Careful. I just want to be careful mm -hmm. that we don't target the youth in the community that live here. Oh, it's absolutely, it's adults. So, <laughs> adults that are drinking in the pub, creating noise, or creating I'm sorry, it's not a weed. My dear friend, don't get me started with that. Please. This city's lost its mind. I voted in Albany to legalize a medical marijuana. Made sense, right? I'm not a doctor. If a doctor says this person can benefit from marijuana, it's medically proven, I say I gotta listen to the experts. Then they voted when it was brought to my attention that for low quantity, low quantity amounts of marijuana, that we shouldn't be arresting our youth. So, you know, that kind of makes sense, right? This is an addiction problem. Arresting them is not going to make things better. It'll give them an arrest record. They'll never be able to get a job. Kind of made sense to me. Legalizing an outright marijuana for anyone, I have a problem. We've lost our moral compass. If it's fighting back <coughs> on arrest, I'm with you. If it's medical, I'm with you. I smoke. I have a weakness. They're banning cigarette smoking in public. I can't do it in parks. I can't do it anywhere. How are we going to legalize marijuana? Where are they going to smoke? I have no idea. So maybe they'll give us tickets. Welcome to your What's your address? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, I can be ticketed for smoking a Marlboro cigarette. Pelham Bay Park, that's 2,700 acres of open space. Chances are, I won't get that ticket if I'm smoking marijuana. <laughs> We've lost our moral compass somewhere, but it's transition. As you can see, I wear my emotions on my sleeve. I will say what I feel, and I'm not saying you're walking in the rear, but for the power. I'm not manipulative, I'm not manipulated, I can't be bought off, I am who I am. So let me ask you, I have a question.
what could be built as of right. Then he tried to push that up a little bit, North Board, Center Klein, Community Board, myself, and everybody made sure that in his realization of 12 floors and uh, he originally wanted 10. And then went to 12. And then he's back down to 6 at this point. So we're we're the coach. Where where do you where do you see it like in in what about the first of the community doesn't want to solve my problem. That's one. Two. There are laws that say as of right, the person can build something. That's the current summer. We've already pushed them from 10 to 7 and now 6. And that's staying on top of him and making sure that he doesn't overbuild. As of right, he can build 7 stories. That's not 7. He got down to 6. Now he's in the basket, right? And they say, well, okay, what's going to do? We're going to have to pull. We're going to push. We're going to put enough pressure on him to make sure that get as much out of this as possible. The reality is, and the fact is, he can build it. And it's only because of your elected officials that he's not going to seven floors, that he's down to six. And that was the last communication that we had. I'm sorry? I'm sorry? country in the world, democracy works this way. We may not like it, but it is what it is. What I'm trying to say, it goes in, right, it goes in your control. But hold on, friend. Be realistic. I said, be real with me. Someone built your home at a time when there was no song. Someone built everybody's home. I'm not sure if anybody in the developed yet. You built your own home. This area was developed. At what time it was farmland? Okay, someone built your home that you occupied as a right. Someone had that right. We worked with what we had. I just alluded to I'm working with it. You're not in your head that we're a bit because you want me to say yes, we're going to stop them. Knowing very well that we can. Very good, so My question to you is do you want me to make you happy and say the right thing that you're going to be honest? <laughs> Being honest is the option, right? Because it is what it is. So, and we're coming up, we want, we're looking for a rezone. And we want to push for a downzone. So that you have But as long as the mayor doesn't get involved, we may be able to decide. And the borough president's office has significant weight in on this conversation of the economic development that we have going on. So, lots going on, lots of moving parts, loud and clear because from day one, Butler Bay has said no more development. I'm with you there. And that's the message when I sit down with them. What can we do? How do we down something? How do we help the constituents that people that live this neighborhood that have lived there for 52 years, remain here and not look to leave? I enjoy the fact that I hear so much that they have a and that they want to do it. My responsibility is to make sure that you stay here as long as you can and are not forced out. That's my responsibility. Well, I think you can succeed. And I am the Why? Initiated a lawsuit during the summer, still ongoing. The Earl of the Bronx has more supportive housing units than any other borough in the city. We have twice as many as Queens per capita, 41% more than Brooklyn, 13% more than Manhattan, and 99% more than Staten Island. And what was that say for? This, today we had a hearing. Today we had a hearing. Today, I articulate those exact numbers again for the budget. I remind everyone that the borough of the Bronx is inundated and oversaturated with support of housing units. I'm sorry? Why is that? I'll tell you why. For two reasons. Because the income that
that is given. The question is, why is the borough of the Bronx inundated by support housing? And I'm going to answer you. The income that these developers and managers get is the same throughout the city. So whether they operate one of these shelters or support housing units in Queens, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Staten Island, or the Bronx, same income per unit per structure. The income. So I'm a developer. What are the criteria to make all my incomes going to be the same? Regardless of my income. Land cost and zoning. And the borough of the Bronx has the least expensive land, so they're able to build it cheaper, they're able to buy it cheaper, and they're going to get the same income. This is the problem. So when I sat down with the corporate agencies, we need to build a scale system. Where in Manhattan, pay more rent for those programs, in Queens, in Brooklyn, better parts of the city, pay less of the borough of the Bronx, that is my balance there. Forcing on cluster sites. You don't even know how many cluster sites we have. They closed 1,500 down. These are sporadics. These are in any tenement building. They can live next door to you in the same building. Next private house. The city just to get homeless people off the streets and get those that are less privileged into homes. They sign all kind of leases now. Nuts. 
They're completely nuts. Did somebody make money out of that? Sure someone's going to make money out of that. New York City right now, all-time high on workers. 330,000 employees work with City New York. My argument to them was, what are we going to do? Now, legalizing those apartments, you hear me out, that are not death traps, that have two means of egress, that are not in danger. Do you know in the housing crisis? I would offer that as an option to break on a four years. Chances are, never going to happen. You know why? To bring up that property, that basement apartment, make it legal. $15,000 for parking set. Mandates to put in sprinkler system. Parking regulations, any zoning, plus the work that's needed, never going to happen. So it's another waste, waste of taxpayer dollars. And there's mixed emotions when it comes to these basement apartments. Why? There are homeowners. Some people just stop my neighbors. They take a two pin and make it a six pin. That guy should be in jail. But for our homeowners that are struggling to maintain the single most important asset that they have, and that's their home. And the only way they can combat the increase of real estate taxes, water, and sewer insurance, and upkeep of the house is by renting that unit out. So it's a mixed bag. And these are homeowners that if they didn't have that income, would probably sell. And if they sold, someone will build a bigger structure there. So it's kind of one of those sensitive issues and there is no cookie cutter for this one. It's see, case by case. I'm with you. That's a liability problem. Yes, sir. I want to go back to the zoning. Zoning. Okay. We've been fighting for the years about down zoning around here. And it doesn't work. City plan doesn't do it. What are you going to do about that community oh, board? No, 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 no. No, because there's a reasonable way to fix it. Maybe you can do it. Shane, uh, right now it's only 50% parking for the building. Depends on the building. Depends on the building location. 50% parking, in some cases it's 60. Okay. In some cases it's zero. Yeah. Right, well that's the problem. Okay, so fix that. And, and there's loopholes to waive off parking altogether. That's your zero. Get rid of the loopholes. You cannot waive off parking. And make it 100% parking. If you have 10 apartments, you have to have 10 parking spaces. If you don't have the room, you can't build it that big. Right. So now, that's what right. we go back to being fair, right? We know that there's a housing crisis. And we admit that there's a housing crisis in New York City. That there isn't enough supply to meet demand, thus pushing rents up. Otherwise, economics tells us. More supply, less demand, prices go down. The way it is, it's killing all of us with that parking. Okay, got it. We live in a city that is now 8.6 million people and gradually grow in increase. There's accommodations that have to be made for this growth. Not building, because nobody wants it in their neighborhood, right? It's a problem. We have to work with the system. Don't fight change. Don't shape it. Because you can't stop change. But come up with something reasonable and say, hey, city, mayor, elected officials, I don't care who you are. Here's the give and take. Don't shove it down my throat. Let me be a part of the process. Let me share with you. And collectively, let's come up with a plan. That's the solution. Don't try to stop it. You can't stop change. It's inevitable. Shape it. You'll get more from it. And we have a community board that is extremely active about overdevelopment. I put it back from a reasonable point. We cannot sustain more development because our schools can't sustain the growth. Our streets can't sustain the addition of cars. Our transportation options are not there to substantiate the growth. I said, give me infrastructure, now bring me development. It's an argument. It's an argument. Let me try it again. Um, Next question. We have a, there's a law that says that New York City will not turn away anybody who was homeless. Was homeless? Now, if somebody goes homeless in Westchester, they come down to us, we're going to support them. How about changing the law that we will support anybody from New York City who's homeless? Because I don't 